All right, Giants Nation, welcome to The Shit That New York Giants Fans Say, Part 10. If you want to go back and watch the entire series, I do have a separate playlist. At the end of the video, I will add the playlist. You can watch all of the things that are being said by Giants fans. So this first comment from a Giants fan in one of the groups is basically about Saquon Barkley and Daniel Jones. He is saying that the New York Giants fans have a double standard when it comes to Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. Both players in my opinion are seen as injury prone and realistically it's not those play the players fault it's actually the giants in terms of you know not having an offensive line and just really not protecting these two players so i don't feel like there's a preference in which player you know gets a pass it's just that daniel jones already has his contract so a lot of people keep forgetting that the New York Giants were trying to offer Saquon Barkley a contract prior to this offseason and Barkley just didn't like any of the contracts we were offering. So some of you guys like to pretend like the Giants weren't trying to offer him a contract because he went to a team that was willing to pay him more. This team is contending. We're not contending. So it actually made more sense for the Eagles to pay Saquon Barkley. It still doesn't change the fact that he's seen as injury prone. And it doesn't mean that we don't think Daniel Jones is injury prone. Like all the Giants fans know that Daniel Jones is injury prone. Whether it's just bad luck or it's just the offensive line doesn't do a good job of protecting him. We are aware of it. I don't know why anybody who is considered a quality New York Giants fan would think that we're okay with Daniel Jones being injury prone. We don't really have a choice as fans. The contract is already paid and some of you guys just have never gotten over the fact that Daniel Jones is paid. You come in year after year with the same talking points about us being okay with Daniel Jones and giving him a pass. We're not giving him a pass. The GM and the ownership, they're the ones that are giving him a pass because they're the ones that are making the decisions. So this, this poster at the end of the day is one of those goofies that uh, Carl Banks talks about. I'm not, I'm not even a Carl Banks fan, but I'm glad that somebody gave you guys a label because you guys are obsessed with Daniel Jones and then you will turn around and say that you don't like Daniel Jones and you want him gone from the team. However, you guys crying about it is not going to make him leave the team faster. It actually seems like it's going to make him stay with the team longer. I don't know if maybe you guys cry and bitching about Daniel Jones actually makes Giants management and ownership get hard. Hey, no ditty, man. No ditty. And you're like, man, you know what? We should keep this guy. It's like an opposite response of what the minority part of the fan base wants. Now, I'm not saying that everybody is content with Daniel Jones. I just think they don't make a big deal out of it because they realize like, man, this guy's already signed. Whatever happens, happens. But I don't really see him playing out the entire contract. But that's just me personally. All right, so now that we are done talking about Goofy 1, we're going to talk about Goofy 2. <laughs> so this next comment comes from somebody who is a professional Daniel Jones hater. And so he comes in and he's talking about the Hard Knocks episode where Joe says something about Patrick Mahomes not being able to win games. And he's talking about a specific part of the season. He highlights the Seahawks game and the Dolphins game. And he says that he doesn't believe Patrick Mahomes would be able to win behind that line. And he's absolutely right. I feel like Patrick Mahomes would be injured, in my opinion, after those two games, because there were a lot of sacks that were given up by Josh Zuto. I mean, the Miami game is where Daniel Jones got injured, and it was because Josh Zuto can't block. He is not a left tackle. If I'm not mistaken, he's a left guard, but he was playing tackle. He's too slow. So you risk having Patrick Mahomes get injured. So a lot of you guys probably say, well, Patrick Mahomes is a much better quarterback than Daniel Jones, but he is throwing to Travis Kels, which is significantly better than anybody that Daniel Jones has ever had. And, you know, so you, you take him off of that nice team that he has over there, despite his wide receivers doing dumb shit and getting in trouble. And you put him on this team. Would he make Wandell better? Yeah, but you'd like to have uh, Barkley on that field. So you are now putting him in a situation where Barkley's not healthy. And then you also have two of the worst tackles on the team blocking for him. And so you risk injury in a situation like that so it's not like he's not going to put up better numbers than Daniel Jones he would have in a hypothetical situation right we'd like to think that but it's like how long would he last behind that version of the line because I think Giants fans are being disingenuous when they say things like what this guy is saying towards the end of his comment which is oh the backups are better you're being disingenuous and let me explain to you why so you like me 
watched the majority of the Giants games and you realize that after the Arizona game, we no longer had Saquon Barkley. We played the 49ers. The Seahawks was killing that offensive line. And then Miami obviously did a pretty good job too. So you watch those three games without Saquon Barkley. And obviously Daniel Jones is like, man, I'm not throwing into coverage because, you know, when we go back to the 49ers game, they were even talking shit because he looked confused Drew in that 49ers game because there's no Barkley there. So they're not worried about whoever you have on the knee. And that's why he ended up having a decent amount of yards that game. But it was like all like short passes because they wanted him to throw deep because they have, you know, a lot of guys in coverage. They're not worried about the running back that's out there. And he knew that, but he's, he was going to be confused because he's like, man, so this is what it looks like without Saquon Barkley and no wide receiver one. Because I'm um, sorry to tell you guys, but you know, Wandell and Hyatt, while we think that they're good wide receivers, I don't think any of them are close to being a wide receiver one this previous season. They're, it was like having a bunch of wide receiver threes out there. And so when when Tyrod Taylor comes in, he comes in to Josh Zuda getting hurt and getting replaced by Justin, which was an upgrade. And then he comes in to Saquon Barkley being available. And you know we probably could have won that game if he didn't make that mistake at the close to the half. But Tyrod Taylor and Tommy DeVito had better situations than Daniel Jones. So you can say the line was bad all year, but if you're getting Andrew Thomas back and if you're losing two of the worst tackles on the team and just having somebody come in and play better than them, you've now been placed into a better situation. And I think a lot of you guys expect Daniel Jones to win with less because he's getting paid the 40 million. And, and that's not even just the quarterbacks on this team. It's even in the league. Like Daniel Jones is not allowed to have a good team. He can't have a good offensive line. Uh, he can't have star players around him because then it's like, oh, he needs the team to be perfect, right? And so even Daniel Jones along here, Trevor Lawrence, who has had better talent around him, you guys are okay with that. But, you know, this idea of putting talent around Daniel Jones or saying that he doesn't have talent seems to be offensive. Like the, the guy that we all acknowledge as a former Duke quarterback and not really having high expectations for him is not allowed to have talent around him. I, I find that weird. Like, it, I don't know if it's just a weird obsessive dislike for Daniel Jones where you know you can't say man this guy if we're being honest doesn't have the talent around him there's a bad offensive line situation so I already don't think highly of Daniel Jones but I have to admit that his situation is not good and you guys will never do that and that is just goofy shit <laughs> all right so this last comment comes from a non-goofy and basically it's saying something that people don't really like to acknowledge now if we're being honest I feel like some Giants fans feel like if Dak Prescott was on the Giants, the Giants would be better, but I, I disagree. And so this comment basically comes from that place of, if you were to shuffle the quarterbacks in the NFC East, the Giants will still be trash. And most of the people in that thread acknowledge that this is true. And I get it. Dak Prescott and Jalen Hurts were better prospects than Daniel Jones. Now, a lot of people will say that Daniel Jones is closer to Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts just has a significantly better team, and I agree. Um, I'm not saying that Jalen Hurts isn't better than Daniel Jones. I'm just saying that a lot of people really don't think that highly of Jalen Hurts, but they do think highly of Dak Prescott. But I will say this about Dak Prescott and Jalen Hurts. I think that they are obviously better than Daniel Jones, and then on the Giants, they would be better than Daniel Jones, but they just wouldn't be winning significantly more games because the problems with the, the New York Giants isn't solely on Daniel Jones and it's hard to tell the goofies like hey I get it Daniel Jones is not the ideal quarterback but can we admit that the Giants were just not a good organization like they have a really hard time saying anything outside of Daniel Jones sucks that's all they'll say they won't acknowledge all the holes that we have on the on the roster and so yes shuffling the quarterbacks would not do anything for the Giants. You wouldn't be in the playoffs if you had Dak Prescott. A lot of Dak Prescott and Jalen Hurts' success comes from them having management that's actually intelligent and making the right decisions, You know, drafting the right guys, and actually building a team. Joe's trying to do that now, and you could run into a situation where he's able to build a team and move on from Daniel Jones. That's for, that's highly possible, especially if we don't do something stupid and say, well, well, the season was not good. Let's just fire Joe and start over with a new GM. No, you, you cut Daniel Jones if he has a bad season and you draft the quarterback and you continue to build a team, something that the Giants have not been doing. So, yes, it's easy 
for stupid people to just say, hey, well, Daniel Jones sucks and that's why the, the Giants are bad. But that is far from the truth. The Giants have a bunch of other issues that people refuse to acknowledge because people are so obsessed with quarterbacks. But I don't think having Dak on this team would do anything for the Giants. I know a lot of people, they watch the Cowboys with Dak and they think that Dak is a great quarterback. And I'm not saying he's not a great quarterback. Um, He's top 10 in my opinion, but a lot of it comes from him playing behind that offensive line on the Cowboys and the same thing for Jalen Hurts. So those two teams did what the Giants cannot do, which is to have a good offensive line. I'm willing to say that if the Giants had a better offensive line, I think you see a better Daniel Jones. Does it mean that Daniel Jones would be able to take this team to the Super Bowl? Absolutely not. But you would see him play better because he wouldn't be throwing from his fucking ass. And I think the people who are fair Giants fans and intelligence Giants fans and don't run with what the media is talking about, about he's just terrible because he's terrible, can realize that. Like if the Giants were able to build an offensive line and Daniel Jones still sucked, you could easily move off of him. You'd say, well, the offensive line's good. Um, we have a wide receiver one, but Daniel Jones just can't get the job done. But I think the GM has realized, okay, I screwed up on the offensive line and I finally got the wide receiver one. And now I'm bringing in people that are veterans to help with this line. If Daniel Jones completely shits the bed this year, I have my first chance to cut him in March. And that's the route that we go. But again, I want to go back to the original post where we just acknowledge that Dak Prescott and Jalen Hurts they're not changing this New York Giants team over the last few seasons if we have them. So it, it's it's tough for people, even probably Eagles and Dallas fans to acknowledge it, except for the Dallas fans that don't like Dak Prescott, because I have found out that some of the fans on Cowboy Zones and just in general aren't impressed with Dak Prescott because the, the Cowboys have like a really good team. And when it comes down to the Cowboys getting to that next level of getting to the Super Bowl, Dak Prescott is their problem. And that some of the Giants fans are like, oh, we'd love to have Dak Prescott be my problem. Well, if you don't build this team out and you get Dak Prescott, then you essentially maybe win one playoff game every year and then that's it, right? In, in a situation where you you know, you know you pay Dak 60 million, which I don't know why Giants fans would want to do that. I'm hearing Cowboy fans don't want to do that. I just, again, if we go back the last few years, Jalen Hurts and Dak Prescott ain't doing shit with the Giants either. You guys are, those two quarterbacks, they're in a great situation because again, management, ownership, they're doing a great job over there. And the Giants management and ownership have been doing a horrible job. I'm not going to shit on Joe because Joe's only been here for a few years and he's cleaning up the mess from the other GMs, which part of that mess includes Daniel Jones and what to do with Daniel Jones. But a lot of it is bad draft picks, uh, you know, not having a defense that can be consistently good. Uh, we complain about Daniel Jones being a bad quarterback, yet the Browns are able to make the playoffs with Watson being a bad quarterback. You know it's bad, and Watson's bad when you have people, uh, what was it, Tannelbaum was saying that they should trade for Daniel Jones and give us Watson, which would screw us because then we can't reset our counter at quarterback because that bum's contract is fully guaranteed on like our quote unquote bum. So I don't know, guys. I think this poster is actually making sense. And most people agreed, but there's still the goofies that are upset because anything that's actually truthful when it comes to Daniel Jones is hurtful for them. And I just don't get it, guys. But that's it for all the comments today. Um, I will continue making this series and you guys just tell me what you think about the goofies, the non-goofy, like tell me what which comment you identify with. Some of you guys might be a part of the goof troop as they would say, and I just personally wouldn't do it because it's, it's a super delusional part of the fan base where I don't want to be. And I don't want to be a Daniel Jones lover either. Um, I can be somewhat optimistic about him him because I want the Giants to do good. I don't give a damn about Daniel Jones. If he's here two years from now, I don't care. If he's not, I don't care. I just want to see the Giants win some games and that's it.